Liverpool presented the home side with the opportunity to get back in the Champions League places and within five points of the top spot, while Liverpool had the chance to guarantee themselves the top spot for Christmas, which is always nice. Arsene Wenger and Rafa Benitez both have 100% records in big four clashes this season. Arsenal have beaten Manchester United at home. Liverpool have beaten Manchester United at home. Arsenal have beaten Chelsea at Stamford Bridge. Liverpool have won at the bridge. Guy Mowbray was at the Emirates Stadium to see who'd make it three wins out of three. big-hearted gesture from Arsenal, whose players are donating their pay for today to the Teenage Cancer Trust. Now they have to show that they've got big hearts for the game, too. Here the charity ends. This is a big four battle of huge importance. When Arsenal beat Manchester United here last month, Samir Nasri was their two-goal match winner, and he returns today after two games out with an ankle problem. Abu Dhabi drops down, otherwise it's the same side that drew at Middlesbrough last weekend. Liverpool's most notable absentee is boss Rafa Benitez. He's at home recuperating after a kidney stone operation. And so he sent Sammy Lee down in charge of this side, with Robbie Keane recalled to start, but missing Javier Mascherano through illness, and still without Fernando Torres. Aga. Riera. Trick didn't deceive Sanya. Haggis stayed down. And Keane's able to collect and tee up Gerrard. Not his best effort, straight at Almunia. Arsenal fans gesticulate furiously at the assistant referee, Mike Malarkey. Keane is clearly onside. Al Clichy was the guilty party, playing him on by a good yard or so. Nelson Wenger was saying before this game that he thinks it's compulsory for Arsenal to beat the three other teams and by those teams he means Liverpool, Chelsea and Manchester United. Carragher, lovely touch from Gerrard. This is Alonso, promising this for Liverpool. Keane's cross behind Lucas and the Nielsen is able to get it away. And Percy. Sanya. Lovely tempo to the game now, Sanya's cross. And they all got the touch. Not enough power on it to really test Pepe Reina. It's a lovely cross. Difficult for Adebayor. Sammy Lee directing operations today. Lost his job as sport manager three days before he was supposed to lead them out at the Emirates at the start of last season. Finally gets his chance. Alonso, unlike him, that was a heavy first touch, but he's regained possession quickly. Lovely ball across to well spotted by Clichy. Saw the danger and got across to Keane, who's then gone crashing into the tackle. An angry reaction from Arsenal's fans. A dramatic fall and a yellow card for Robbie Keane. Well, Keane did get to the ball. Arsenal fans can boo all they like. It is one of those tackles that will get you a booking given away cheaply by Van Persie. Run back strongly by the same man. Here's Gallas. Clichy. Still not moving freely. Nasri. Van Persie breaking through the middle. He was onside. He's taken it beautifully. He's taken that beautifully too. He struck against Liverpool. What a way to do it. The control was exquisite. The finish emphatic. Kept his balance as Carragher closed. He had one shot at it. And that's all it took. Arsenal won. Liverpool nil. Born in hand. 
Rafa Benitez is on the other end of that line. Acting operations from the comfort of his sofa. <laughs> Stewart. Caught by Adebayor. And it looks as though a yellow card is being shown to Adebayor. And he's absolutely incredulous. Does seem a soft one on first viewing. 50-50 duel. Ah, oh, no, well spotted Howard Webb. Should have known he'd get it right. Carragher. That's all he can do. Snap the ball out of play. He's been making steady, unspectacular progress. Reaching, marching his back for distance and Percy got his head to it. That's Aka. It's one for Keane to chase. Might turn out to be a brilliant ball. Robbie Keane in to score. What a goal. Route one, Liverpool. Well, that's a goal out of nowhere. Daniel Agger just went for the old-fashioned launch downfield. Keane was in front of his markers. a remarkable thump into the roof of the net. Almunia has no chance. Just wonder what a goal like that will do, not just to his confidence today, but will it set him off on a run of goals now for Liverpool? He needed that. Wouldn't you just know that he'd get it today? Here, of all places. Count. Away from Clichy. Liverpool have numbers for Gerrard! He couldn't stretch out far enough. Yeah. Arsenal are having a wobble here, and some. Out through the legs of Joru. Gerard was getting there as quickly as he could. The count. Going for goal with a pile driver. Now Moody felt the need to get a touch to it. This has been Liverpool all season. Watch them closely when they go a goal down, because they come back firing. That's a good save. Gerard. Brigas stretching. In with Alonso. It's broken for the Nielsen. The Payor loses out to Carragher. Always there for Liverpool. Abregas is down hurt now. That's it for the first half. And judging by that expression, that may be the last we'll see of Cesc Fabregas this afternoon. It's a heavy limp. And a face that says, that'll be me done for today, at the very least. Arsenal without their captain, Cesc Fabregas, now to pull the strings. Arva lower. That's Abu Dhabi's first involvement. And it's to give Liverpool a free kick. Arsenal vastly outnumbering Liverpool in the penalty area. Might not mean a great deal. But if the delivery's right, usually is from Gerrard. Wasn't that time. Alonso. That's the 19-year-old in Stewart. Alex Song in hot pursuit for Arsenal. Can't stop in Sewer though. Gala sets away only as far as Lucas. Parried by Armunia. Parried to safety, importantly. And Armunia had to be shot right from the off here. He's got a clear view of Lucas's shot. Didn't get a deflection. Straight through to him. But it's well fielded. Here comes the latest message from Casa Benitez. And away all the target, picked out perfectly. This is DRB, now Van Persie. This is the longest that Arsenal have kept the ball in the Liverpool half this half. It's Adebayor. Song, given away now. Adebayor wins it back, though. Shrugs off Arvaloa, but unfairly in 
Howard Webb's view. Adebayor is in the book, and Howard Webb's going for his pocket, and that's it for Emmanuel Adebayor. There is fury around the Emirates Stadium. Arsenal down to 10, and one of their best hopes for getting back into this game is leaving the field early. Here we go. Is this worthy of a yellow card? Swings the right arm. Catches our Beloa. Oh, there's a foul in the first instance, with the studs hanging high too. I don't think there can be too many arguments. One noise around this stadium. It's the sound of Arsenal booing. Not for one of their own players today. do to Arsenal so often of course 10 men can be revitalized and here they go with the Nielsen only Van Persie in there with him and the Nielsen needed to show a great deal more composure than that Arsene Wenger is still disputing the red card shown to Emmanuel Adebayor Alonso wins the ball and tries to free Steven Gerrard Elzar Again, Arbeloa outside, Elzar looking for Dirk Kaut, Almunia stretches his legs to save. And here's DRV. This was an anxious moment for Arsenal supporters. Almunia kept his eyes firmly on the ball. Lucas. This shows you how much is at stake with this game. There's no question at all of either side settling for the point. Three needed. Aga going for them. We know he can hit a ball well. Remember his goal against West Ham a couple of seasons ago. Oh, that's a terrific strike. Just a little too much bend away from the top corner of Almunia's goal. Liverpool will certainly feel this is an opportunity missed should they fail to take maximum advantage. Arsenal, perhaps in the circumstances, should take a point. Not a chance. Not with the gap that they've got to make up. Alonso. Here's Aga. In Stewart. Barbell leaping. Elzar in behind, but unable to find the target. Don't think it'll be the last chance in the game, but it's a pretty good one. Did well to get in front of Gal Clichy. Sammy Lee headed it himself and thought it was in for a second. Emmanuel, uh, tell us how you saw the decision to send you off. Uh, you looked a little bit shocked, to say the least. To be honest, yes, you know, it was very difficult and I just want to protect my ball. I'm a striker, I don't think. I think if all the strikers in this league doesn't protect the ball, they will never score a goal. Like a player, like a striker like me, like uh, like Drobe Kane, like uh, Nelka, Drogba, we always have to protect our ball, and that's what I go for, and that's what I have done. And at the end of the day, I think he has done a mistake. Has the referee explained what it was for? Was it for the arm, the, the boot? What, what was it for? I don't know what it was for, he, I and I'm sure he doesn't know. Frustration, obviously. Is that the overriding it's, feeling? It's frustrating because we had a nervy first half. We were under pressure to win this game. And I knew we would finish very strong. Uh, we played higher up in the second half. And uh, we could not take advantage of the fact that uh, we're slowly taking control of the game and uh, uh, because we were down to 10 men. Sammy, strange day with the boss not here. How was that all working down there? Um, well, we, we've been in constant touch um, all week ever since he, he um, came down with his illness. Um, and we made sure, with technology being so, as it is, that we had them. Um, we were in constant um, touch with him throughout the game and before the game. So just a testament to, to his professionalism because he's been in a lot of pain, a lot of pain. But he's been making sure everything's been going right, making sure everything's organised, and um, making sure that we got something out of today's game. Has it been a frustrating time for you? No, not really. No, uh, I think people outside the, the club can create something that's that's not there, you know, which is sometimes a little bit disappointing. But uh, but we're in the club and. Um, the fans, everything. No one's really frustrated. I'm, I know I'll score a lot of goals for this club, and um, it was a nice to score today. And I know there'll be there'll be a lot more to come 
it's, it's, I prefer to get judged at the end of the season and not in December. Well, we're going to judge him right now, in a couple of minutes anyway. I should say that uh, Adeboyo is obviously out for the, uh, the Villa game on Boxing Day uh, for Arsenal. And uh, Fabregas is going to be out too for up to three weeks. Uh, he's damaged the medial ligament in his knee, according to uh, Arsene Wenger. Uh, it was typical of this season, Alan, this result, and that no, none of the top four seem to be able to impose themselves on the title race. Liverpool had the opportunity today, move ahead, get out of sight of Chelsea for a bit and couldn't do it. Yeah, I think that if you'd asked Benitez before the start of the match, uh, if you'd take a draw, you'd, you'd say, yeah, categorically, it's a hard place to go to the Emirates. Um, the game itself, I thought, was a fascinating game. I thought it was absolutely brilliant. Maybe not as good technically as some of the games that, between the, the top four this season, but for pace, intensity, and just fascinating to watch it. It was really incredible. Mm -hmm. Lee? Very much the same. It was a great game to watch. As he said, the quality perhaps wasn't there. But there was endeavour, there was enthusiasm, there was tackles, a couple of goals, um, sending off. I mean, sitting there, sitting there watching it, it was very, very entertaining yeah, indeed. Great. And the thing, the, uh, the thing that stood out for me was that probably changed the game was that was the Adebayor sending off. This is his first booking, and you have to say, probably got it right, Howard Webb. His foot's yeah. high, just goes over the ball a little bit. It's a yellow card out. I agree with that. I think the second one, I think Howard Webb, who is a great referee, has made a massive mistake yep. here. This is a ploy that players have been doing since time began. What you're doing is you're protecting the ball. He, there's no intent there at all. He's put his foot there just to protect the ball, and he wins it. I think he wins it fairly well, and clearly. I think we see his arm go up, and we thought maybe yeah. Howard Webb had sent him off for that, but he actually said it was for the tackle, yeah. and he is just protecting. And, and obviously, He's upset because it did change the way the team played, and um, in the end, Arsenal say you know they're happy with the draw. In the end, now, Arsene Wenger uh, contended that uh, if Adeboyo had to go, then Robbie Keane should have gone. What do we make of that? Great tackle. <laughs> yeah, it, it was a great tackle. Mm. I think that uh, when he runs after the ball here, Clichy heads it out and, and wins it, and then Robbie runs after it. You can see clearly from the other angle that he wins the ball. And it, you know, he's adamant, it goes to the linesman that he has won the ball. This one, Lee, you can, see, you see, can tell See, our I mean, he's gone for the ball, he's got the, the ball. ball. Because it's from the side, maybe the referee thinks, you know, that's a dangerous tackle. He, look, he's won the ball. And as he stands up, Robbie Keane, afterwards, he, he actually explains, look, referee, I got a ball. And he did get the ball. I think from, a, from far away, that yeah. would look quite a nasty tackle, but, he, but it wasn't. The Premiership was brilliant because of the pace, the intensity, plus the contact. I mean, if you, if you start taking the contact of the game, I think you're in big trouble. So what about the aforementioned uh, Keane, then? It was uh, a great performance from him, wasn't it? Great goal. Well, it was a, certainly a great goal, and there's a lot of conjecture about if he's going to stay or go. Um, he keeps on getting taken off. Last week against Hull, Benitez has left him on the bench. I think he's built up play has been good, neat, tidy, effective. His work rate is always a 10. I mean, this is out on the right-hand side. Uh, he was involved with the build-up there, but his work rate here, absolutely fantastic, chasing back. But 20 million pound striker, you're going to be judging the goals you score. Now, I think a, a confident Robbie Keane would have let this run past him. I can't understand why he has his back to the goal there and sets up Gerrard. I think if he just lets it go past him, he's in. But then when it's played into his feet from Alonso, watch him closely here. He knows the game, he knows Arsenal weakness, it's over the top. And he's saying to Alonso, get it over the top. Two minutes later, it comes over the top. And does he take advantage? To right he does, because this is an unbelievably good finish. <laughs> Half volley, nobody's saving that. It is absolutely magnificent. And then that should, I mean, that should give him the confidence, but... That was Benitez in the phone there. That's a 250-mile <laughs> hook he's got there. Yeah. That's the longest hook in history. And he keeps on, Benitez keeps on taking him off. Um, well, could you see the logic of that move? I, ca I can't see it. I can't see why, you know, he scored a fantastic goal. He's playing all right. On the second half, he might have been a bit quiet, but leave him on. You know, at the end of the season, he's talking about you'll be judged by the team's performances. If you're a 20 million pound striker, you will be judged by the goals, goals. you score. Mm -hmm. uh, what about Arsenal defending then, Lee? Well, we said straight from the start of the, of the match, really, they got caught three or four times with balls over the top. Sooner or later, it was going to cost them, and that's what it did in the first half. No pressure on Agger. He's got all the time in the world just to punt a ball over the top. The hands go up for offside. Robbie Keane's not offside. Clichy played him on on the far side. Sets up Gerrard. And that was the first one. This is the second one. When you get bypassed, your midfield's bypassed there. They're already at your back four. You need to be <coughs> dropping off, not coming up. Look at the, the, the back four. They've, they've stepped up. Gerrard can make a forward run. 
Riera can make one. Time on the ball, little chip over. He's onside again, and straight away he's into a dangerous area. This time, then they've got good pressure on the ball in midfield. The midfield's doing their job. They're forcing Liverpool back. There again, they put, they push him back, and then one punt up for up front. Bit of pressure on the ball this time. Too high, too high. Not concentrating the back. Robbie Keane nearly gets in, and that eventually leads to the goal. And we see Giroud and Gallas. I think they're a little bit too too wide apart. Robbie Keane's just going to spin in the hole. Big long ball from the fullback, and he's in. If one ball beats you, you two centre halves from 50 yards you're in trouble. And to be fair to them, the second half, when they got one sent off, it kind of worked in their favour because they, they were at 10 men. They dropped a little bit deeper, and so they didn't get hit over the top. And Liverpool were disappointed second half. And the Arsenal should take some credit the way they, they, they fought for the second you half. You think they'll play that way against Arsenal Villa and Young and <laughs> Agbo and Lahore? Well, it's, because, it's a, because you're playing yeah. against not a great deal of pace yeah. here. Once yeah. you start playing against pace... Well, they won't play so put, high up the pace. The no, is, definitely not. The thing is, as well, you know, Gallas and Giroud, and they're not inexperienced players. Gallas is 100 yeah. and whatever caps. You should know better than that. Let's have, a look at the, uh, let's have a look at the table, then. Here's the damage. You know, looking at where Arsenal are, you can't move for Arsenal fans moaning. You know, it's not entirely beyond the realms of possibility they can yeah, pull that Yeah, but that's, that that's you saying that. Yes. That's not us saying that. No. Yeah. If you're looking at three teams that can win the championship, it'll be one, two, and four. Right. Liverpool, Chelsea, and Manchester United. I, I think Aston Villa, if they, Martin O'Neill, if you say to him you're going to finish fourth, he'll bite your hand off. Arsenal mm -hmm. be the ones that, if Martin, anybody's yeah. going to fall out the top yeah. four, it will they, be They need to win today. They need three points against all their rivals, and they didn't get it. But there was a good second-half performance with ten men. OK. Now, we're too good, too bad. Best of the season so far, if you'll indulge us uh, in that. This is when I knew West Brom season wasn't going to go right, when the ball boy just can't actually run and get the ball properly. We were playing the Villa when nothing goes right at West Brom. <laughs> they look, there's a bit of a Devon lock about this. I think he jumps a shadow or something. doesn't appear to trip. He just goes over. This is, what, uh, this is what being chairman and owner can do to you. It does drive you to drink. Mike Ashley clocks in at just over 13 seconds. I love the wibbly-wobbly thing he does with his cheeks there. Brewer. Brewer. We've all done it after drinking a pint too quick, haven't we? And with uh, tactical expertise like this on display from Paul Ince, I don't know how he lost his job. Look at this. Shoot. Shoot. <laughs> yes. Always an excellent idea if you Don't want to score. Um, now, now have a listen to Roy Hodgson speaking fluent Norwegian. So they thought that they were working in the baptism of fire for Holland. When you're too Hang on a minute. That wasn't Norwegian. Norwegian. Let's have another <laughs> listen to that. In the baptism of fire for Holland. Fascinating. Learned something on match of the day too. There's no Norwegian expression uh, for Holland baptism of fire. Extra. Now we know you learnt something here. Greg, we're from Benitez. Me, not you. Ball, two of you. Not me, you two, four, two. Not me, you, two. Or something like that. Here he uh, asks one of his own bench for a fight. You're all talk, you are. Come on, let's have you out here. We'll sort it out in the technical area. Here, here's David Moy celebrating. Yes, celebrating the goal. Yes, you take that as well. And now in a fit of joyful fury, he removes his coat and slings it in the direction of his own bench past an, an alarmed fourth official. <laughs> Here's the, uh, the best crowd scene we've spotted so far this season. The girl behind, uh, behind Capello can't believe what she's seen. Yes, it's him. I'm going to take a picture of the back of his head. There it is. Look what I've got. I've got the picture of the back of Fabio's head. <laughs> And pretty soon she'll ring somebody off and say, I've got a picture on the back of Fabio's head. It's probably a screensaver on that phone, even now, isn't it, I'm sure. Gomez, the man of the season so far. Let's be honest, he's been hopeless at times. And on occasion, he's been a danger to his own defenders. <laughs> when injured, he performed a laughing kind of <laughs> pained thing. <laughs> this went on for about three minutes, but a minute after that, he was perfectly all right. <laughs> you can almost forget that the poor man is capable of some uh, world-beating work. A couple of fine saves here. I think he's the one to watch in 2009. I think the second half of the season is going to be better for him. Tony Adams losing the plot in no uncertain terms yesterday, <laughs> trying to get his message across. But the good thing about Tony, you know management won't drive him out because he can always unwind with a bit of dancing. <laughs> <laughs> We've just got to find him a partner. He'll win it next year. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Have a great Christmas. Don't let your football team ruin it too much. Join us in the New Year.